Economist, Obama administration alumni, and Harvard President Emeritus Larry Summers wrote a scathing indictment of the university over the weekend. Summers said he's lost confidence in Harvard as a place where Jews can flourish after the university made a controversial pick to lead its anti-Semitism task force. The controversial pick, by the way, is a uh, Harvard professor, an expert in Jewish studies, who is controversial in people's mind because, despite being a Jewish person himself and a Jewish scholar, has corroborated the view or seems to uh, support the view that there are human rights abuses happening in uh, Gaza, including that it is an apartheid conditions there. Meanwhile, at Columbia University, a Palestinian justice student organization claimed that two Columbia students, who are also members of the IDF, sprayed a chemical weapon on peaceful pro-Palestinian protesters during a demonstration. So the Columbia Spectator seems to have done the most comprehensive reporting on this, interviewing a number of students, I think about uh, eight students on the scene. And basically the claim is that they noticed people behaving somewhat erratically at this pro-Palestine protest. They had their faces obscured by Kifia's, the pro-Palestinian um, flag, but said that, or not flag, but a scarf, that uh, they said was different than the ones that was being sold on campus. And I did set them apart slightly from everybody else in the crowd, that they were overheard um, referring to Jewish protesters, Jewish pro-Palestinian pro protesters as uh, 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 self-hating Jews. Um, and then later, uh, this substance, this chemical weapon called uh, skunk, which apparently was developed by the IDF and has been used in uh, the West Bank, was deployed, uh, causing several students to have to go to the hospital. Yeah, can't do that. And I hope the university looks into it. And investigates and hold accountable anyone who, who attacked a protester in, um, in such a way. You know, it's interesting to have uh, Larry Summers back on our, uh, back in our purview, um, obviously the former president of Harvard, who himself was forced out over what uh, many people would have described as a kind of violation of free speech or political correctness, um, given a speech he had made um, about uh, the lack of, of women in um, high-level engineering and mathematics fields. Um, that's, uh, so his, that's interesting to recall that happening. I think that was back in 2005, given the current ouster of the um, Harvard uh, uh, clouding gay being forced out. Yeah, I mean, the, the skunk story is incredible. I mean, can you imagine all of the discourse, all of the energy that was spent for weeks and weeks and weeks alleging that there was all this violence and terrorism uh, on student campuses? You had billionaires calling for the names of like 20 year old college students to be put on billboards and driven around their homes and on Harvard's campuses and, and other places in the, in the country, announcing that they were anti-Semitic with their pictures next to them because they attended a pro-Palestine rally. And there's been absolute, really negligent media silence on the fact that a number of students at Columbia University were actually attacked with a chemical weapon. Now, to specifically, for people to know more about this weapon, because I wasn't really familiar with it. It's apparently developed by the Israeli firm o o Odor Tech, and it's employed by, this is from the Columbia uh, University reporting, employed by the Israeli military against demonstrators in the West Bank, According to the BBC, the company Mistral Security supplies skunk here in the United States and describes the, quote, non-lethal, vile-smelling liquid as causing crowds to cease their activities while allowing law enforcement to gain control. Aside from its stench, which has been compared to sewage and rotting uh, flesh, side effects of the chemical include nausea, skin rash, and vomiting, um, according to a report that was put out about crowd control weapons by the ACLU back in 2016. Um, so if we're in a place where people are infiltrating per members of the IDF, let's not bury the lead here of that story, that there are potentially, I think they might also be students, but who served in the IDF using chemical weapons that are regularly deployed by the IDF against their fellow students, this vastly outstrips any of the claims of kind of verbal violence, words as violence, stochastic terrorism that have warranted in the eyes of so many conservatives in the United States of America and liberals as well, entire hearings in Congress to discuss whether or not words are violence on college campuses. Where is the outrage not just against these students who were attacked with chemical weapons, but also, again, the three Palestinian students who were shot a couple of months ago, seemingly for the what crime of wearing the there was, that was 
there was incredible outrage about that. Well, and, there uh, was. I remember we covered this at the end of last week that one of the reporters at the White House, uh, one of these White House press briefing, briefings, asked one of the White House spokespeople whether or not Joe Biden has even reached out to those kids, picked up the phone and given them a call the same way that he has, I think, legitimately done for, for civilian victims of October 7th. And the answer was, we'll get back to you. We can't confirm that. And it seemed to be, I haven't seen any updates, but it seemed to be that the answer was no. And so I think the question here is whether there's a real asymmetry about whether or not the president and the media cares as much as American pro-Palestinian victims of violence, real violence, as they do about the kind of verbal violence that has been the uh, focus of so much media attention. I mean, the, the people who were shot has been it has been widely covered in the media, as it as it should. It should be investigated. I don't know that they've arrested a. I can't recall if they've arrested a perpetrator. Obviously, they did arrest a perpetrator in that um, that uh, that other case that was. Uh, I, I can't remember where that was, but um, with the I think a a mother and a, a child shot, and they arrested stabbed the perpetrator and, or stabbed. And killed. The Good, child arrest was them. Killed. I mean, bring all the purveyors of violence to justice. Absolutely. Like, there's no. What, I have no—that deserves media coverage. It deserves prosecution and throw the book at the perpetrators. Well, it's, it's interesting to me, Rob, because in any other instance, if this were, say, a certain kind of COVID news that wasn't being uh, discussed, the suppression of the Hunter Biden laptop, suppression of the likelihood of lab leak theory being the le legitimate origin of COVID, you would be quick to say the media should not have suppressed that information. The media should cover it. And it does, to me, feel like in this instance, you're saying, well, yeah, sure, I personally object to violence being used, but you don't seem to have any of the same animating vitriol or, just, or, or frustration. It is being covered. There has not been a single mainstream headline, as far as I, last time I checked, about the fact that chemical weapons were used against Columbia students, even though there's simultaneously numerous statements. For example, the, the, um, uh, stuff, the summer story about his being upset about this new Jewish head of the anti-Semitism uh, task force, who is a professor of Jewish identity at Harvard University. He, there's headlines about him objecting to this enormously qualified person being picked for this panel because Summers happens to have an ideological difference with him, meaning that he's trying to be smeared as somehow well, not, unqualified I mean, trying, because I, he's sympathetic to the uh, humanitarian I, I was concerns there was of a Palestinians. Lot of coverage deservedly of those Palestinian uh, the the people who were shot and stabbed, um, the Columbia, the chemical spray story. I mean, th this story is like 11 hours old. There should be more. Sure, there should they should cover it. It should be covered more. I, uh, yeah, well, I'm I'm really grateful it, to be on a program like this one that isn't willing to shy away from covering these kinds of stories because honestly, you're not going to hear about this almost anywhere else. And I thought it was really important to bring this particular one uh, to the viewers right now. If you want to learn more about what's been going on at Columbia University, not that there should be such a focus on these elite universities, but given that there's this asymmetry, you can go and read more about the story over at the Columbia Spectre, and we'll let you know if there's any updates going forward. More rising right after this.